Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at United Airlines Flight 93 hijacker Ahmed Al Namir. United Airlines Flight 93 was a Boeing 757-222 departing from Newark International Airport, New Jersey and bound for San Francisco International Airport, California. The aircraft is seen here three days before the attack on the 8th of September 2001. There were 33 passengers aboard, 4 hijackers and 7 crew members. The flight did not depart until 8.42am and was running 42 minutes late, crashing into Shanksville, Pennsylvania and killing all 44 aboard. It is speculated that the Boeing 757's target was the Capitol building in Washington DC, but this remains debatable to this day. Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Nami was born on the 7th of December 1977 in Jeddah Safa in the Asir province in the southwest of Saudi Arabia, which is named after the Asir tribe. He was born into the Quraysh tribe of Saudi Arabia, a grouping of Arab clans which historically controlled the city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia and its Kaaba, with the Prophet Muhammad born into the Hashim clan of the Quraysh tribe. He was one of ten kids and the son of Abdullah al Namir. He served as a muezzin at the Squale Mosque in the Khaimas Musayat. A muezzin is the person who proclaims the call to the daily prayer five times a day at the mosque. By early 1999, he became very religious and became an imam. Graduating from high school, he attended the King Khalid University Islamic School in Abba, the capital of the Asir region. At the time, the university was very new, having been founded one year earlier in 1998. As of 2023, according to the Times Higher Education University World Rankings, King Khalid University is ranked between 801 and 1000 of the 2023 World University Rankings. In autumn 2000, he left his family to complete the Hajj and look for work, but instead travelled to Afghanistan. Working in security at Kandahar Airport, he met Abu Basir al-Yemeni, who educated him on Al-Qaeda doctrine and convinced him to participate in a suicide operation, and took him to meet Osama bin Laden. He then trained at the al farok training camp, a Taliban and Al-Qaeda training camp near Kandahar. There, he befriended Walid al sharay an American Airlines Flight 11 hijacker, while al sharay a fellow American Airlines Flight 11 hijacker, as well as Saeed al Gamdir, a United Airlines Flight 93 hijacker. In the spring of 2000, the four pledged themselves to jihadism, having listened to speeches by Osama bin Laden, and at the same time, he officially dropped out of university. During the training, Al Nami was dubbed Abu Hashim and was fondly remembered by others at Al Fayouk training camp and considered gentle in manner. According to Mushabib Al Hamlan, Al Nami had laser eye surgery while at the training camp. Bizarrely, during training, he reported to others that he had a dream whereby he rode a ma, an adult female horse, along with the Prophet Muhammad, and the Prophet told him to dismount and fight his enemies to liberate the land. This is kind of weird because idolatry and depictions of the Prophet Muhammad are banned by Islam, so who knows what he thought he saw. In October 2000, he met 9-11 architect Khalid Sheikh Muhammad, who instructed him to return to Saudi Arabia and acquire a new Saudi passport to hide his travel to Afghanistan, as well as to get a visa to travel to the United States of America. To this day, citizens of Saudi Arabia require a visa to visit the United States of America. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is a pan-Islamist Pakistani terrorist who is the former head of propaganda for Al-Qaeda and is currently held at Guantanamo Bay. In October 2000, he was taken by Mushabibi Al-Hamlan from Afghanistan to Saudi Arabia. At the time, Al-Hamlan decided not to proceed and returned to his family. Once back in Saudi Arabia, he applied for a B1, B2 tourist visa. In his initial application, he noted that he was a student but didn't provide an address for his school and only listed his address in the United States of America as Los Angeles. No specific address in Los Angeles, California. And indeed, he never made it to Los Angeles. His visa also noted that he would be traveling with 
My friend, Moshabab. His visa was granted on the 28th of October 2000. He applied for the visa under his Saudi Arabian passport number C11507. However, this passport had evidence of his travel to Afghanistan. In mid-November 2000, he and Wail al Sharay and Walid al Sharay all travelled as a collective from their native Saudi Arabia to Beirut, Lebanon. On the flight to Beirut, the 9-11 Commission report reported that a senior Hezbollah operative was on board the same flight, but this was seen as a coincidence. It is believed that during this time he tried to get support from Hezbollah for the 9-11 attacks, but this did not come to pass. He then travelled to Iran. It is speculated from there he travelled to Afghanistan and went this convoluted route to avoid getting their passport stamp, travelling to Afghanistan by land. While in Afghanistan, he went under additional training to undertake hijackings. He then travelled to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates and got travellers checks which were paid for by Mustafa al Hawasay. al Hawasay is a Saudi Arabian citizen who is alleged to have acted as a key financial facilitator for the 9-11 attacks and is currently held in Guantanamo Bay. Travelling back to Afghanistan in March 2001, he was in a farewell video with the other muscle hijackers at a training centre in Kandahar. Al Nami did not speak in the video but studied flight maps and flight manuals. Returning to his native Saudi Arabia in Jeddah, he got a new Saudi Arabian passport in order to hide his travel to Afghanistan. His new Saudi Arabian passport number was C505 Free Sucks Free, which was acquired on the 21st of April 2001. Resubmitting his application utilising the same answers for his visa application to the United States of America, the only difference was he crossed out lines regarding travel with Al Hamlan, and he obtained another B1 B2 tourist visa through the United States of America Consulate General in Jeddah. This was obtained on the 23rd of April 2001. Flying from Saudi Arabia to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, from Dubai he would fly to Miami, Florida via London in the United Kingdom, arriving on the 28th of May 2001. He flew along with United Airlines Flight 175 hijackers Mohand al Sharay and Hamza al Gamdir. Shortly after arriving, he telephoned his parents. Travelling down to Florida, he lived at apartment 1504 at the Delray Racket Club condominiums with United Airlines Flight 93 hijacker Sayed Al Gumdi in Delray Beach, Florida, with the duo moving in in June 2001. However, they did not get along with others living on the condominium, and on the 28th of August 2001, neighbour Maria Siska Simpson reported having to let them into her apartment to retrieve a towel that had fallen off their balcony onto her balcony. The St. Petersburg Times interviewed Simpson, and she said that both were rude and shouted at her, determined to get into her apartment, and pulled the door trying to bully past her. However, Simpson noted that they both seemed softer at previous times when she had seen them around the complex. In June 2001, he opened up a SunTrust bank account with a cash deposit of $4,700. It is speculated that this money for the cash deposit came from Al Hawasawi. On the 29th of June 2001, he obtained a Fluidian driver's license. In the same month, he called his family for the last time. On the 5th of September 2001, he purchased tuckets for a flight. On the 7th of September 2001, at Mile High Travel on Commercial Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to travel aboard Spirit Airlines from Fort Lauderdale to Newark, New Jersey. Saeed Al Gumdi purchased Al Nami's ticket for United 93, with the jury seated in seats 3D and 3C, respectively. On the 7th of September 2001, he and other United 93 hijackers, Zayed Jagar, Ahmed Al Hasnawi, and Saeed Al Gumdi, flew from Fort Lauderdale to Newark aboard Spirit Airlines, with Fort Lauderdale remaining one of the two largest bases for the airline. Along with the other United Flight 93 hijackers, he checked into the Marriott Hotel at Newark Airport, where he stayed for two nights on the 7th of September until the 9th of September, before moving to the Newark Days in Wilmington. Both hotels remain open to this day. On the 11th of September, he checked through United Airlines at Newark Airport at 7.03am, along with Sayed Al Gumdim. According to Newsweek, he checked two bags in for the flight.
With United Airlines Flight 93 departing from gate A17, he boarded at 7.40am, along with Syed El Gumdir. However, the flight was delayed for 42 minutes, meaning that United 93 took off at 8.42 a.m., just four minutes before American Airlines Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center, with the pilots and cabin crew of United Flight 93 informed of this, as well as the hijacking of United Airlines Flight 175. At 9.28 a.m., United Flight 93 was hijacked. However, with passengers and cabin crew able to make various calls and aware that two planes had hit the World Trade Center, they became aware that the hijackers would use the Boeing 757 as a weapon. This led passengers to attempt to overrun the hijackers, and while it is known that they made it to the cockpit door based on a trolley bashing into the cockpit door, to this day we don't know how far they made it and if they made it into the cockpit. With Zayed Jagar crashing the Boeing 757 deliberately at 10.03 a.m. and 11 seconds into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, killing all on board. However, Al Nami's father continued to hold out hope that his son had not been on board United Airlines Flight 93 and was still alive, telling Barbara Walters of ABC News in March 2002 perhaps somebody used his passport. However, the airing of a farewell video on Al Jazeera would put any belief that he had not participated in the attack to rest. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be informed of when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet, have an amazing day. And remember, the truth is always more interesting than fuction.